Yeah, so the model that I'm studying is tree structured Ising model, where I have p random variables, uh, and each of them take the value minus one and plus one, and they're described by a tree, and the probability distribution over them is represented by an Ising model, where I have theta ij as the edge strength over my tree, and they are upper bounded, their value is upper bounded by beta and alpha. And basically, if two random variables are neighbors in this tree, then the correlation between them is tangent, tangent theta ij. And if they're not neighbors, then I look at the path between them, and the correlation is the product of correlations in this path. And usually, the purpose of the graphical model learning is taking n samples from this distribution and learning the underlying structure behind it, which, which is a tree. So there's a classic work from 1968, which is the Chalu paper which basically looks at the maximum likelihood tree. So it says that having n samples, what is the algorithm that gives me the maximum likelihood tree? Which as it said is basically the zero one loss function. The goal is trying to recover the correct tree with high probability. And the algorithm is very simple. Having n samples, you look at the empirical distribution of n samples. Then you, you calculate the empirical correlation between every pair of nodes in the graph. And you run the maximum weight spanning tree uh, over these empirical correlations. And the output of this algorithm, I call it uh, TCL for Chaolu. Uh, and we have a theorem which uh, might have improved previously, but we did it again, which shows that uh, if the number of samples is greater than e to the power of 2 beta over alpha square lo log p, then with high probability, the output of this algorithm is exactly equal to the cr true algorithm. Um, and just looking at this, sum, and we have the converse bound for this uh, theorem, which basically shows that if the number of samples is smaller than this number, then we cannot guarantee the correct tree recovery. And looking at this uh, sample complexity, you see that, well, it's good that it's logarithmic in the number of samples, which is number of variables, which is p. But you can see that as beta is growing, as the maximum edge of strength is growing, the number of samples is growing, and as alpha is decaying, again, the number of samples is blowing up. And there is, a, there is an intuitive reason for that, uh, and I'm going to tell you that. That uh, to understand the dependence on alpha, let's think about uh, two nodes. If we have two nodes that are weakly correlated or they are uncorrelated, it's very hard to detect if there is an edge between them or not. I need many, many samples to recognize if there is a weak edge or there is no edge between them. That's why that as alpha is going to zero, the number of samples is growing. And to understand the dependence on beta, we should look at the three nodes. If I have two nodes that are very strongly correlated, and I have another node that's correlated with one of them, you know, the extreme case that is that these two nodes are exactly equal to each other. So there's no way, like I need infinite number of samples to recognize where this other node is, is connected to. That's why that as beta is going to infinity, I need infinite number of samples to recover the tree, the uh, structure reliably. But you know, uh, we don't do the structural learning always just to recover the correct tree. Sometimes what we want to do is have to have an estimation of the, uh, est uh, the distribution so that we can do inference later on the uh, on the recovered uh, distribution that we get. So for example, if we have several random variables and what we want to do is basically inference. We are uh, observing a few of them and we want to estimate or we want to predict something about the other one. Um, we don't care if the underlying graph is the correct graph or not. What we want is to make sure that the marginal distribution over these subset of nodes is accurate enough. So that gave us the uh, motivation to introduce a new loss function, which is different from the zero loss, one loss function we, that we introduced previously, which is basically this is LK between two distributions. And what I do is I look at the TV norm between the marginals of P and Q over the set S, and I take the supremum over S of all the sets of S. S is a subset of nodes um, such that its cardinality is equal to K, right? So I want to make sure that all marginals are accurate with respect to the TV norm. And all marginals of size k, this, is, this gives me the uh, LK, right? And in this work, we're looking at the L2, which is basically guaranteeing that for every pair of nodes in my graph, uh, the correlation between them in the original distribution is estimated correctly. Um, and I'm going to give you an example to show why, how changing this, studying this loss is going to change the sample complexity and change the algorithm. And the example is the following. 
if the original distribution is coming from a tree, which is basically a Markov chain one, two, three, and the correlation, these numbers are the correlation between the nodes. If the, if the nodes one, two are weakly correlated and the nodes two and three are strongly correlated, I look at the correlations, you know, induced by this algorithm. So the correlation between one and three is basically the product of these two numbers. And I draw some n samples from that. Since these two numbers are very close to each other, I might be unlucky and get n samples such that this edge actually looks stronger than this edge. So it's very hard in this scenario to detect which of these edges do exist in the original tree. And, it, um, and here we have two strategies we can follow. One is the following. Basically, this happened because we had, an, we had a weak edge. And I gave you the intuition that weak edges do not change the distribution so much. So instead of trying to detect it correctly, let's say that if there is a weak, weak edge, if I'm not sure about an edge, let's say that it's not there. Let's just have an estimated forest on my nodes. And uh, let's try to, uh, to uh, recover the stronger edges that I'm sure that they do exist. And this would be my estimated forest. And the correlations induced by this distribution would look like this. And as you can see, this is not too bad. These two numbers were pretty small. So I estimated them with 0, which is not too bad. So this algorithm, this learning problem, is basically focusing on accurate pairwise marginal for all nodes. And in addition to that, I want to make sure that I'm reliably recovering stronger edges in the tree. And I followed, and I did some calculation, and I got the tight results on the sample complexity of this learning algorithm. And I showed that if the number of samples is greater than e to the power of 2 beta times e over eta square and uh, times log p, then I can recover uh, the stronger edges reliably. Uh, and in addition to that, I can, rec I can make sure that I'm estimating pairwise correlations within eta. And this is with high probability result. And actually, this is tight bound. We have the converse bound for this. But there is an alternative scenario in which, uh, in which instead of trying to recover only strong edges, if we are not sure about a weak edge, let's keep it like that. Let's try to, to recover a tree, even if this tree is not necessarily the correct tree, right? So in this case, my recovered tree would look like something like this. And the induced correlations from this distribution would look something like this. So these two edges are coming from the empirical distribution. They are accurately estimated. But the estimation of this edge is not really great, because according to this tree, the correlation between these two should be the product of these two terms, right? But still, if you compare this induced correlations by this algorithm to the original one and this other algorithm, this is giving you better performance. Even though you recovered a co an incorrect edge in the tree, uh, still the distribution that you got was, uh, was, uh, was a good approximation of the true distribution. And actually, we looked at the tree recovered by the Cholo algorithm, and we analyzed the, we, we gave an achievability algorithm, which shows that if number of samples is greater than maximum of e to the power of 2 beta and eta to the power of minus 2, then uh, I'm recovering the pairwise marginals uh, accurately with high probability. And uh, the proof needs a combinatorial and a, st a statistical characterization of all the errors that you can see in the paper.